Hello there. Our names are Jacqueline and Emily, and we are occupational therapy students at the University of Southern Maine. You may be wondering, what is occupational therapy and what do occupational therapists do? Occupational therapy is a health profession that empowers and helps individuals of all ages to engage in the important and meaningful activities that make up a person's everyday life. Occupational therapists help individuals, families, groups, and even communities overcome challenges and barriers so that they can continue to engage in these meaningful and necessary activities of daily life. There are eight dimensions of wellness. These are aspects that affect our health and well being as we age. They are emotional, financial, spiritual, occupational, physical, intellectual, environmental, and social. In this video, we are going to focus on the social dimension of wellness. Research has shown that loneliness and social isolation can increase an older adult's risk of developing mental and physical disabilities. Social isolation has been linked to a 50% increased risk of dementia and other serious medical conditions. One in four adults ages 65 and older is socially isolated. Risk factors that can lead to social isolation or loneliness include living alone, the loss of family or friends, chronic illness, and sensory impairments. Socially active older adults have been shown to thrive as they age. Social connection helps nourish your mental and physical health and support you in living a long and fulfilling life. Having a variety of people in your social world promotes self-esteem, purpose, and life satisfaction. A variety of social connections looks different for everyone. Take Colleen here. She belongs to tennis club, on Sundays, you will find her at church in the morning, and she has dinner with the family in the evening. Once a month, she volunteers at the Veterans Center. Now meet Bill. He enjoys bowling on Friday with his team. He visits with his friend Larry in the community center where he plays cards. Bill also enjoys Skyping with his grandchildren who live in Oklahoma. The aging process is complex. We experience many physical, mental, and social changes throughout the years. Changes may include loss of family or friends, challenges with mobility and getting around, vision or hearing loss, financial problems, social anxiety, and health conditions. These changes may create barriers that prevent us from making and maintaining social connections. If you're wondering if you may be at risk for social isolation, we have included a link to a quick questionnaire in the caption below. Here are some general tips. Ask your doctor, a friend or family member, someone from your congregation or others in your community about social opportunities. This could be a swim group at your local YMCA or a bowling league that gets together every Thursday night. Find out what's happening in your area that could be an opportunity to make new friends. Look online or in the local newspaper for groups that share your interests, whether it's a book club, tennis club, or a woodworking class, perhaps. Keep track of who you need to catch up with and grab coffee or dinner with a friend or family member, or set up a card game. Ask your spiritual community or any other community member about volunteer opportunities. Set aside a regular time to connect with family and friends by phone or video chat. And in case you have your doubts, remember, you can definitely learn a new skill at any age and it is good for your brain to learn new things. Keep an open mind and exercise your curious inquiry when meeting new people and trying new things. In addition to the tips we just talked about, we have also created a list of local and national resources to help you overcome barriers and access social opportunities. To explore our list of resources, click the link on your screen or in the caption below. Thanks for watching!